Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, and you're listening to Incredible Creator Podcast. My guest today is Johanna Godinas. Johanna is a powerful female entrepreneur, speaker, and certified wellness practitioner, and she's the founder of Life and Style Coaches. Welcome, Johanna. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Kimberly. It's such an honor. Yes. So why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about you, like where you grew up, how you got to where you are now, because I know you kind of tried lots of different things before you uh, got to where you're, what you're doing now. Definitely. Um, I grew up in Puerto Rico, born and raised. Uh, my parents divorced when I was in third grade. And that's when my adventures started, I guess. Um, my mother moved to Illinois for a training and then back to Puerto Rico. And I started moving around a, a lot with her, kind of figuring out what she was going to do with her life. And of course, having a kid meant that I was going to get dragged along for the ride. Um, so after moving back and forth from the States to Puerto Rico, we ended up settling in the States when I was in seventh grade. But being that my mother and father had shared custody, it meant that I get to travel a lot. I would spend my summers, my Christmas vacations, my birthday, Thanksgiving, spring break. I would always go and, and visit my father. So I did not live the most conventional life since I never had a long streak of time in a place. I would never spend more than three or four months without taking a long break, which kind of meant that for me, change and adventure kind of became an everyday thing. And it was something that then I adapted as an adult. So um, my father was a businessman. He owned a hotel. Uh, so I went to school for business, started my own business when I was 21. Uh, it was a racing school. I, I used to race cars and I had a great passion for it. So I figured the more I can be around it, the better. So having a racing school meant that I could be involved in it all the time, go to the track, drive all those people, really amazing cars. And it, overall, it was amazing. Um, then my father started thinking about what his life would look like uh, outside of the hotel, since hotels take a very long uh, time when you are managing them. Uh, so then I decided to go to North Carolina. I received my MBA there. And then 2008 hit. And it was a tough time getting a job and figuring out, you know, the company that I have was very much a luxury company. It wasn't a necessity. Therefore, in 2008, a lot of those niche markets disappeared pretty much. So um, uh, through a tough time, I found fitness uh, as a way to kind of get out of my own way. And I fell in love and quickly I figured out this is going to be my next, my next job, my next adventure. So um, I moved back to Puerto Rico and started a co corporate wellness company in which we would create wellness programs for employees so that the company could receive uh, benefits from their premiums and their insurance companies by proving that they had preventative care for their employees. Um, and that was amazing. Uh, but as always, you know, because change was such a big part of my life after about three years, uh, I met somebody who lived in New York and decided to, why not? Let's move to New York. So picked up my stuff, <laughs> uh, moved to New York, spent a few years in New York and it was definitely life changing. Uh, I made amazing connections and got to go a little deeper into one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, coaching. And, you know, that time in New York really opened my eyes to the fact that people overeat because of other issues. Mm. People have image issues, but it stems from something other than an issue with their image. And the more I started understanding that, the more I started researching into what is really going on that are causing people to live these unhappy lives and attempt to receive some kind of a better feeling from food or drugs or alcohol. I mean, right now addiction is rampant in our in our country and maybe even in the world. And it's important to figure out, you know, where are these leading causes? So after a few years in New York, 
I decided to move to Costa Rica. I wanted to volunteer. Um, being in service is really where where my heart is. It's really when uh, when I can really shine and be the happiest and 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 feel like I'm really doing the most service to this planetary experience. Um, so I went down there and I worked with endangered sea turtles for six months. We worked with leatherback turtles mm -hmm. and. The more I isolated myself from people and the more I dove into what it was like to have a true purpose and a true cause and go all in for a cause, the more I realized that that's what my life was about. Now, at that moment in time, I didn't really understand what that meant. Like I knew that I wanted to go all in and I knew I loved what I was doing, but I didn't understand how the service to others and how living in the present moment was going to how I was going to to apply that into what I was doing. So um, after I came to the States, I moved to North Carolina and did a project there. And then after that, I got to come to California. And once I got here, it was really when I started meeting people that started filling in how I was going to put everything together. And that's where Life and Style Coaches was born. You know, um, I began studying the likes of Napoleon Hill, Neville Goddard, Earl Nightingale, Charles Hansel. I mean, there were just so many amazing uh, mentors, if I can call them that, that entered my life uh, since I've been here. And because of them, I began to truly understand that the main thing that's missing is our connection with the universe. And it's just understanding what that even means and, 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 and what that looks like if we really truly want to embrace it in our lives. And um, wow, what an amazing journey it's been ever since because we have really found a niche, a, 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 um, a way to take all of that information that the secret, the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, um, manifesting, we've taken all of that, including what it is to be healthy in your own body and how to connect all of it in order to truly create a happy life. And ever since that's been the journey, it's just been amazing to see the growth that when one person has it, then all of a sudden, you know, anytime you learn something and you feel passionate about it, you want to share it, right? So, exactly. and then how amazing it is to see everyone around you begin to be impacted by the fact that you have now put it upon yourself to share this knowledge with, with everybody else. Yeah. I, so yeah, I that's, love that's, that's, that's not in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And that's quite a journey. I, quite different things that you involved yourself in. From you yeah, know, um, to to health to you know, turtles, <laughs> but you know, always one thing has been in common: um, teaching. Mm -hmm. I've always taught something. It's always been enlightening people in some way and helping them feel better about themselves in some way. And so, really, when I started looking back at my life and all my catalysts, the underlying teacher wanting to share, wanting to make the world a better place has always been there. And any chance I've gotten, I've, I've stepped into that role. It isn't until now that it's really manifested itself in the sense of, no, you know, your purpose is much bigger than that. And your message has to be a little bigger than that as well. So that's just been just a great awakening experience. Yes, and you do have a huge message. So thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And as you were telling your story, I was thinking about the important importance of uncertainty. So some people are really uncomfortable if there's an unknown, you know, jumping into the unknown and just going in 100%, not knowing what's going to happen. And it sounds to me like in your life, you just went from unknown <laughs> to unknown, to unknown, and you're still going. So, um, you know, yeah, there's something to be said. I mean, how, how do you, um, let's say someone's more in that fear base, or they, they say it's always been done this way. <laughs> they have their, 
the way it's going to be and how do you help them yeah. change their mindset so they can actually step into the unknown because i found that that's the only way to really get anything really big done correct um well there's something to be said about fear um so I, I believe the main thing is reframing how you look at fear. That, that's, I think, where we would start. Um, so for many, fear is what holds them back. It, it triggers a response of, that's something I shouldn't do. Once we start to understand that fear only means that it's something that needs further exploration mm -hmm. or further questioning or further information, once we start looking at fear from that perspective, it begins to kind of be a little bit more fun. So um, one of the things that I teach my clients is that if it's scary, it's probably moving in the right direction. <laughs> and, and faith is a big part of that. You see, when we incorporate faith, what is faith? Faith is the belief that something that we cannot see we cannot touch, we have never experienced, is still available or there or right? That's yes, faith. Yes. So when it comes to understanding something, of course, there's going to be fear when you're stepping into the unknown. But when it comes to making changes, fears can help you understand where you're not prepared. So you see, for example, if I want to switch careers, and I'm afraid that I'm going to run out of money, then that's where I'm not prepared. So my bank account isn't ready for me to switch jobs. So that's really the issue. So the issue is not switching jobs. The issue is making sure that I can find a way to save enough money so I can get a new career. So once we start switching the, the, the way that we're looking at it, you see in, in life at the moment, we are in a reactive state because we are letting others control our power. Let me go back a little and, and, and kind of unfold what that means for a second. So others control your power when you are choosing to react to things instead of sit down and think about them. So when somebody cuts you off in the middle of the road and you get messed up and your whole day you're angry because that person didn't even see you and cut you off, you are giving them your power because now they made you mad all day. No, no, nobody did anything. It was just your reaction. So stepping into your power means that you are choosing what things you're going to feed your mind, feed your body, what things are going to impact your life, right? When we are consistently living in the television, movies, social media world, we are consistently being bombarded by messages that are eliciting responses within us. And many of them are emotional responses that don't really need to be there. So you are giving that control of your responses to something else. So in this era of manifestation where everyone can create anything they want, all the tools are already in this existence, everything is available and possible, it is up to us to take that control of your thought and your mind in order to be able to manifest what you desire. So when you're making big changes in your life, the important thing is to lay it out logically, to take emotion out of it. And I know that sounds really strange because you're in it. Of course, you're emotionally attached to the responses and, and, the, and, and the things that are going to happen. But the more you lay out what you want and how you see it playing out, the more you're able to control how that manifests itself for you. So the fear comes in with the unknown. But if we start diving down to what are the unknowns and start educating ourselves and preparing ourselves, then we can start kind of negating or neutralizing that fear and then start to shift our perspective from worry, which is not a creative state. It's a vibration of lack into possibility. Mm -hmm. which is a creative state and it's a vibration of attraction. And that's really where the fun part comes in because you know what? Fear will never go away. It's, it's part of the human experience. 
it's there for a purpose. You know, it's, it's good to be scared if you're in a bad situation. You know, the states of fear are supposed to show up to protect you. Mm -hmm. However, because we don't have as many things truly attacking us in this world, right? We're not, nobody's hunting us and we're not having a hard time gathering food and hunting food. So now our brains have to figure out what else to protect us from. So these fears can show up even with very small things just because your body and your brain and your, your instinct is, is designed to protect you from things. Wow. That's a great answer. <laughs> and a lot more than I was even expecting. So, um, so, so many people are talking about manifesting, you know, the secret came out several years ago. There's so many people doing these manifesting, these vision boards, these, and you know, I hear of all this going on and people saying, well, you know, I did my vision board, but nothing's happening. And I'm thinking, well, you have to put some, some, something behind it. You do have to put some action. So I know that you are especially great at manifesting and you can help other people the same way where they're actually manifesting. They're not just dreaming about it. So correct. That's yeah, that's what we, life is style coaches. That's really what we specialize in. We may not sell ourselves as that service, but if you want to break it down, what we really do is we teach people how to manifest. The fact of the matter is that whether you have been informed of this or not, you are divine, you are magnificent, you are a powerful being, and you are connected to this universal intelligence that feeds everyone. And that's why everyone is connected, right? Even if we don't want to, sometimes you're thinking about someone and all of a sudden you open your phone and there's a text from them. Yep, that happened. Mm -hmm. They did. You did. Universal intelligence, all connected. Imagine like a supercomputer up here and then we're all miniature computers down here. So the, the master computer has the ability to see and calculate what every other computer is doing and it can access and it can help and it can send whatever those other computers need because it has the capability of doing that. If you want to look at us in that way, in the quantum physics world, the way that we are connected through energy is much like that, which is why you meet someone that you've never seen before and you're like, man, this person, I swear I've met them before. Mm -hmm. All of that, yeah, you, you, they're your energy, their energy might have met at some other point in time because energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's only changed, so it's recycled. Our, our water has been here billions of years. It's not new water that we're drinking, it's always been here. So when we start seeing the immensity of things, manifesting is nothing more than understanding yourself enough to be able to take out the hamster wheel of repeating thoughts in your mind that are not serving you, the ones that are not advancing you, or the ones that already happened and you can't really do anything about. Once you can take those out, then you can start placing in the thoughts that you want to create. So manifesting, in order for it to happen, it needs to start with the end goal in mind. So you see yourself, you feel yourself, you act as if from the state of being so that you can start getting into that vibration. The easiest way to do it is by educating yourself, right? So if I want to open a studio and I've never owned a studio, the first thing I can do is go to a few studios and talk to people and see, hey, you know, what did it take? What has it been like? What were your struggles, right? Now my mind is just consistently thinking about studio, studio owners, learning about studios. That is what increases your vibration and places you in that space where other people and other things that are involved in that start to be attracted to you. So that's how the law of attraction works. Now, actually manifesting is belief and action. So I'm an MBA, right? So I always say that I'm an MBA by education and I'm an MBA through belief and action because I manifest through belief and action. So belief is the first thing. And that's what the vision boards are good for because the vision boards are going to make you remember what it is that you have to keep bringing into your head. 
But the actual action comes in when those things that make you scared that start to pop up into your life that would start to help lead you into that direction. It happens when you start to say yes. That's the only way you have to start to say yes. Because as we start to say yes to the universe, we start gaining momentum. And the more we say yes, the more the universe brings us. When we say no, we start to cut it off. And how do we know what to say yes to? Because that's another question I get asked a lot. Well, Johanna, I can't just be saying yes to everything that happens into my life. Some of the things may not be that great. You're right. But consider this. If I am asking for $100, and I want to manifest $100, and in my mind, I see a $100 bill, and I feel that $100 bill in my pocket, and I see myself going to get what I want to go get with those $100. And a man ring, rings my doorbell with a bag full of cans that equals $100, and they say, my car broke down, I need you to recycle these for me, and you can keep whatever you get from them, right? How many people would say yes to that man that came in whose car broke down with the recycling? You see, the universe doesn't necessarily give you things the way that you want them to because it gives them to you the way that it can. And maybe the only way it could give you those $100 at that point in time when you were asking to manifest it was by having that guy's truck break down in front of your house so that you could go recycle those cans for the $100. So when we start seeing life as a game, and as if I say yes to this, what are the possibilities? Now, I'm going to go into another part of that. Being in the frame of mind is the number one thing. And in order for you to be able to start thinking that way, you need to have your thinking cap on at all times, which is why television, social media, drugs, alcohol, and all of these things that we are doing to numb ourselves are what is making people feel lonely, feel like God doesn't love them or like they're, they're not able to attract anything. It is those things that are keeping you focused on external factors that are leading to your lack of manifesting. Because if your mind isn't focused on what you want, you're not receiving it. So when you have your mind being taken away by all of these external factors, you're just entertaining yourself. You're, you're not really working towards what you want. So the universe isn't getting that consistent ask, that consistent stream of look how hard I'm working. Look, I really want this. Look how bad I want it. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And, and it's all because of this. And, and, and it's that feeling and it's that thinking, and I'm going to do this because I know that if I do this, I'm going to get it. And then last but not least is universal timeline. Just because you're asking for it now doesn't mean that you can receive it now. Once we understand how manifesting works, you putting that out into the universe means that other people need to do certain things and other people need to get thoughts and other people need to move. The universe can't just make all of that happen at once those thoughts that are going to start popping up in other people's heads and causing them to do other actions that will in turn one day unite to come to give you your manifestation, those background things are going to take time. It's like um, when you go to a play, for example, it's beautiful to sit down and see Fiddler on the Roof. But you didn't see those people practicing. You didn't see the costume makers. You didn't see the director yelling at someone because they didn't memorize their lines. You just get to see this beautiful play in the end. So unfortunately, we don't just get to see the beautiful play. We have to go through the yelling and the screaming and the directing and the asking and the failing because all of the failing means mm, that wasn't the right way. I need to go over here and learn what, whatever I did wrong over there so that I can apply what I learned over here. And once we start understanding life in that way, then we can start manifesting. Because the vision board only serves the purpose of keeping you in the mindset. Every time you walk by, you get reminded, don't lose that thought. If your mind is on something that doesn't matter, you get reminded, come back to that thought. 
A vision board isn't the only thing. Mel Robbins does her five, four, three, two, one, switch your, your thought. So there's a lot of different ways. The vision board is just a tool, however. Putting it down on paper is not enough. Yes, it is very powerful. However, you not taking any action will not lead to that. It is the actions that are, the opportunities that are going to start arising and the opportunities that will lead you to be able to truly start to manifest. And, and, I, and anyone who's a, a skeptic, I ask you to just start sitting down 10 minutes every day, finding silence and starting to change your perspective and starting to change your ideas and your thoughts and just in five or six days a week just start seeing the changes and then let me know because mm -hmm. it, it's that quick that it can start happening yes that is amazing and um, mm -hmm. I just had a question about that so I know there's the there's the imagining and there's the mindset and then mm -hmm. there's the practical steps and um, at first you said when you're writing down your practical steps you kind of take the emotion out of it and then I understand also in order to actually keep your mind there and to actually create something, there has to be emotion behind it. So how do you marry those two? So you remove the feeling when you're looking at like the pros and cons, for example, right? Because let's say that you're in a relationship and you've been struggling in the relationship and you know that it's probably not the best relationship for you to be in and you're not being able to be your best self because you're in it. You want to take your emotions out to say, these are the pros of me being in this relationship and these are the cons, right? So when I say take the emotion out, I mean in the way of looking at the opportunities instead of the problems. Because when we're emotionally affected by a problem, it's very hard to then see the opportunities that are being presented by that quote unquote problem. Because failures and problems are just opportunities in disguise. You're just needing to learn what that is about. Now, when it comes to manifesting, yes, emotion needs to completely be brought back in. But emotion in the sense of how am I going to feel when all of this is already here so that you can act as if. So I know fake it till you make it is not the best thing to say in a time like, but it is. But fake it till you make it, you know, like, um, and it's seeing yourself from the eyes of yourself doing the thing. So before I started speaking, I would go to sleep at night pretending that I was on stage in front of thousands of people and looking at them as I was speaking, not watching myself speaking to them, but watching my eyes, feeling myself, noticing my voice, looking down and seeing what am I wearing and just feeling like, wow, this is my moment. I'm on stage, I'm shining. Within a month, I was on KUSI talking to more I got to that, that I expected to because it was televised instead of just in a small arena, which is what I had envisioned, you know? And again, I couldn't say no to KUSI because I wanted to speak on a stage. The opportunity came through a television thing. So I had to prepare my mindset even though I had imagined it a certain way, that's not how the universe presented it. They presented it a little different, but I took it. And ever since it's opened the door to me speaking on stages to small groups on television again. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things where that was the way the universe could have provided it for me. Therefore, that's the, that's the path that I had to take. So it's taking out the emotion of the problem so that you can see the opportunities underneath it. And then understanding what you want to receive and then putting back the emotion that you want to be in when you get what you receive. So that's how you marry, you marry the two. <laughs> so clear now. <laughs> so, Easier to understand, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I know you've talked about that it's so important to just be true to yourself, be in alignment with yourself. How does one find out how to be in alignment? with oneself and to align that with their goals, with their dreams. So staying in alignment and then being able to put that out into the world. Oh yeah. At life and style coaches, that's definitely what we, what we get the most of is people that feel like just their lives are not aligned with how they think and how they feel and what they wish to have. So 
alignment starts, it, it, it starts with awareness. Okay. It starts with understanding what are my mental patterns. And most of the time, we don't even realize that we have one, <laughs> right? Because if we're not paying attention to the thoughts that are in our minds and we're just kind of letting them roll around, then we're not really aware of what our thought patterns are. So first of all, it's finding where, what are your thought patterns. The negative ones usually will stem from a few things. That's going to be either you're physically unhealthy, mentally unhealthy, your emotions are running amok or your psychology is not, like maybe your chemistry, right? Your psychological chemistry is not aligned. Your spirituality, your finances, your career, your relationships, whether that be with your family, your coworkers, your children, whatever the case may be, and your financial situation. So those are the areas that we look at when we're looking at our client's state of health and seeing where they are aligned. Because the hamster wheel usually stems from one of those areas. And the main thing is, once you understand where your hamster wheel is, so for example, if you're wanting to lose weight, but you're right now emotionally eating, so every day you're, one, doing what you don't wanna be doing, and two, then getting mad at yourself for doing it. So then in your mind, you're mad at yourself for doing what you didn't wanna do, then you're mad at yourself because you don't like the way you look. But where is it stemming from? Is it your body and your image? No, it's whatever you're emotionally eating because. So let's figure that out. Once you figure that out, then you can attack everything else. So you can attack four things by really getting the one. See, so that's the important part. It's once you understand where your thoughts are, then you can start figuring out, okay, where is this stemming from? And it takes awareness and it takes reflection. And again, all of that takes time and silence and, 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 and not having all these crazy distractions. Um, you know, one of the coolest things that I did when I came back from Costa Rica was I threw away my television. I haven't had a television since 2015 mm -hmm. and it has been so amazing. Mind you, sometimes I'm a little late on the uptake when certain things happen because I don't get that flash in the morning that some went on. Mm -hmm. However, in terms of the control that I have over my emotions and over where I want my thoughts to be, it's amazing because I'm consistently being able to put them where I want them, to focus them where I want them instead of mindlessly just trailing wherever social media or, or the television is taking me. So aligning yourself starts with first awareness of your patterns, finding the underlying reason of the patterns, and then finding a way to attack those reasons. And many people say it's always from the inside out. And yes, the work is always to be done from the inside. But I tend to disagree with that on just a little bit, only because if there's certain external things that are consistently, consistently, consistently bringing you into a frame of mind, then that external thing also needs to be taken care of. And, and, and internally accepting it may not be the right thing to do. So yes, we start by working in, but we also, once we start working in, realize what things are not working externally. And let me tell you right now, Kimberly, one of the most enlightening things about this is that when you decide to make a change, a lot of things will change. Therefore, relationships, beliefs, um, activities, um, you know, a lot of it will, will go with, and some of it will be happily, you'll happily let go of, and a lot of it you will resist. And, and the cool thing is that the universe has patience. We may not, but the universe does, you know, take your time. You know, you only, you've got a certain amount of time. The clock is ticking, but mm -hmm. you have time. That's what you're here for is to, it's to go through those things, through those roadblocks and explore them and hit yourself in the head with the same rock too many times until you're like, wait a minute, you know, and that's, it's noticing those things. You know, if you're consistently getting yourself in an abusive relationship, what is it about yourself? And I know, you know, the abuser is somebody else, but the victim is the one that needs to make the decision for it to be over. The abuser is going to continue doing their thing. The victim needs to make a choice. So if you're consistently getting back into those abusive relationships, what is it about yourself that's attracting that? 
so that you can really start working within to love yourself and to know that you deserve better so that you can start attracting better. Yes. And um, so I work with um, women who they're kind of in transition where they're, you know, they've raised their children and now they're saying, okay, what now? So they kind of were, kind of were doing what they should do and, and they might've had really successful careers, but now they're thinking, I don't want to be tied down to that. And they're trying to find their purpose all over again. In other words, they're trying to find the purpose for <laughs> part two of their life. So uh, when you're working with people, how do you help them find that purpose? So they're, they've already looked at their, their patterns and their mind and where they're going. Let's say now they're kind of getting that all in alignment. How do they find their purpose? Oh man, I love this question. Um, I usually ask them to look at two things. The thing that's hurt them the most and the thing that they enjoy the most. Um, and I know that seems like, wait a minute, those are like two completely different things. But usually the thing that you enjoy the most are what you're the best at. And the thing that hurt you the most is what you would like to help people with. So a lot of times when people have no idea what their purpose is, that's where we start. Now, finding your purpose may take a long time and it may take a lot of thinking. For example, um, I had a client who thought he wanted to be a minister of some kind. He gets downloads and he calls it from Jesus and he has written a lot of books about his conversations with, with Christ and um, he couldn't figure out how to inspire people with his story because he didn't really understand why Christ started to talk to him in the first place. Like he was just like, Johanna, I have this amazing connection with God and I wish other people have it. And I know that once other people accept God in their life, that they're going to have it as well. But I'm like, okay, Ed, so how, how do we teach people how to do that? And he, he couldn't do that. And I was like, okay. I was like, so, so what led, led you to this, conviction into this belief. And he was like, what, well, when I learned that if I listened to my intuition and I, and I created certain things in my life that everything would just work out. And I was like, yeah, isn't it amazing? So you call it Jesus. I call it universal intelligence. So we're on the same page about that. It's just important to know that everybody has it. So then he's like, okay, so how do I teach people? And I said, well, who do you think needs it the most? And he said, well, we started with prisoners. Unfortunately, after doing a lot, a lot of research, it's not easy to work with prisoners. It's not easy to get into the prison system. It's very politically controlled. So then we went to the second best, kids. So we started a nonprofit. And now we help kids go to school. And part of our program, because of course, if I'm going to help them, I'm going to be involved in it. So part of the program helps educate kids on how to use whatever they're learning or whatever they're good at in real life. So we teach them finances, we teach them purpose, we teach them listening to their intuition, we teach them how to figure out what their personality style and their learning style are and the way that they like to work, whether they're more visual, whether they're more tactile. And then based on that, we give them scholarships for, for programs that we know that they're going to be really good at because we've already determined these are the purpose of these kids or the things that they're just so passionate about. So after they go through our program, we have people that help them either start a company or get a job. We have recruiters. So it's just, it's that space of what, what is it that moves me? What moves me? I mean, for me, it was education. I, I, I don't think we're not taught any of this in school. And I think it is a disservice to humanity to feel lonely, to feel abandoned, or to feel like a God doesn't choose them over somebody else. It doesn't work like that. God chooses everyone. Mm -hmm. Universal intelligence is available to every single person that decides to listen and, 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 and to take it. Mm -hmm. So taking a minute to reflect on what can I share? What am I amazing at? Or what do I want to help people with? Because it hurt me so badly that I don't want somebody else to go through that. It starts there. And then seeing, okay, so how do I build this up to help other people? Whether it's starting a nonprofit, starting a company that supports people. Um, I, I go to jails and I help uh, inmates write corporate proposals for when they come out of jail so that they can start businesses. Once they get out, 
I help them with their resumes. I help them with their IDs, with whatever they need. Because um, I believe in second chances. I always joke around that there's two versions of me. There's Johanna, which is, hi, I'm Johanna. And there's Hannah Jo. And Hannah Jo is the past me that didn't understand any of this, right? And the things that Hannah Jo did and the things that Johanna does are not even close to the same. So when I look at inmates, I think the same way. I always have to give them the benefit of the doubt because if they committed a crime when they were 15 and they're now 40, I know for a fact I'm not the same at 36 than I was at 16. So, um, so that's, that's been a great place for me to truly test out this thing with manifesting too because it's seeing these people that have been basically shunned by society and forgotten by society come out here and in three years, have a company that's better than what I've been able to build and be driving around in a Tesla, you know, anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. And, and it's never too late for anyone to find their purpose or, or to, to decide that what they're doing or what they um, believe their life is, is, was not correct and change their minds. And that's going to go back to what we were talking about at the beginning. Change is really scary. But when you realize that there's things in your life that are no longer serving you, it's a disservice not only to yourself, but to the universe and to everyone around you for you not to step into this new being that you know that you can become. So although change is scary because, of course, there's going to be fear of, of how are gonna people going to accept this new version of yourself? Like, who is this person trying to become somebody else? No, you can become whoever you want. That is what... The cool thing about being human is a bird cannot become a fish. We can do whatever we want. We can live underwater if we want. We can live in the air if we want. I mean, we've been able to manifest all of it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, fear really is the only thing that holds us back. In the, in the end, uh, the, the era that we are living on is the era of possibility, and it's, it's the era of manifesting. So, so we are the ones that put the limits on ourselves, through, through our beliefs and through our, through our judgments, uh, through our reflections and through our, um, more than anything, judgments, I think. You know, we, we, we believe that everything is right when we see it through our eyes. And unfortunately, you know, when we're a little bit more open to the fact that nobody's right and nobody's wrong, everyone just is in their own world living their experience, then it's just, we can be a little more accepting and it, and it becomes a, an easier world to live in. And talk a little bit about reinventing yourself, reinventing your style, because it's kind of scary because you think, oh, people know me as such and such, and now I'm going to do this, and I can speak from experience. I was a very shy child in even growing up I was very quiet until I got into college where I realized if I didn't talk I wouldn't have any friends <laughs> so I, was, I knew no one yeah um but you know even even after that a lot of times I would keep my what I was thinking to myself and this is new for me where I wrote a book a year a year or two ago and I'm doing this podcast and so all of a sudden I'm saying okay now I'm going to start talking and I'm going to teach you all the things I've been learning. Um, so I'm kind of reinventing myself right now. But how, yeah. what, what advice do you have for people who want to reinvent themselves or reinvent their, their style or how they appear? Or, you know, some people want to do a complete turnaround. Um, go, do it. And, and, and there is whatever budget you have, you can do it. Um, part, in life and style coaches, part of what we do, I mean, obviously our high end clients, we can take them to Macy's, we can take them wherever, but our low end clients, I mean, when the people come out of jail, they all have, they wearing a jumpsuit for <laughs> years. We take them to the Goodwill. Do you think they care that somebody else wear those clothes? They don't care. We go to the Goodwill. We go on a Thursday when it's dollar days and we get them enough clothes for a hundred dollars for them to have for at least a couple of years. You know, it's one of those things where um, if you want it, it's possible. If you make excuses or you think it's impossible, it's impossible. The main thing is make up your mind, write it down and start. Where would I start? Right. Where would I start? If I want to do something different today, where would I start? 
would I go on, would I go to the Goodwill and, and check out a whole bunch of different styles and see which ones I like and then start building something based on that? Or, I mean, I love shoes, so I'll go to the Goodwill and, or I'll buy a pair of shoes anywhere and then I'll find an outfit to match with those shoes. That's when it comes to style. Now, when it comes to careers, that's a little harder, right? So, but I want to say, talk about careers because I think changes in career and changes in style, the change in style, just the main thing is figure out what you like. Don't worry about it, what anybody else thinks. No matter what you, there's a different version of you in every single head that has ever seen you. Okay. If you are trying to please all of those people that have met you or, or you're trying to worry about what perception they have, you will, you will live a very stressful life. Just know that the only person that matters when you stand in that mirror and you're looking at yourself feeling confident is you. What everybody else thinks, it's beside the point. But changing careers can be a little more difficult. Changing careers, the most important thing is for you to prepare yourself as well as possible. So for example, when, so I, I didn't quite switch careers. I went and I volunteered for a year. So that's even crazier because I wasn't making any money for a year. So when I decided to volunteer, I spent six months where I saved every single dollar that I could. And when I say every single dollar, I mean, I did not buy one thing that was not a necessity. But that gave me a year's worth of every bill that I had to pay that was here in the States while I was down there. So my phone bill, my car bill, my car insurance, my health insurance, all that needed to be paid even if I wasn't around. Mm -hmm. And then I made sure that I had left some jobs set up for when I returned a year later. Okay. So let's say that you're a teacher and that you now want to become a firefighter. So the first thing that I would do is what are the technical things that I need to know to be a firefighter? So you have to actually go through a course. You have to get some insurance, I'm sure, some licensing, right? So the first thing I would do is what does it take to become this new person? And write all that down. How do I incorporate these steps into my life? So for example, maybe you work during the day and you start by going to night school. And then maybe you start volunteering on the weekends so that you can start getting experience once you graduate. See, there's always ways to do it. The thing is, no matter what you want to do, it takes W-O-R-K and a lot of it, work. Because success a lot of times is disguised as work. And putting in work is hard. When I started this Life and Style Coaches, it's, it's been a journey and I know for a fact that it will not be where, it, where I desire it to be for at least another two years. If I don't have the patience to wait these next two years, it's never going to happen, no matter how much work I do today. So it's not only putting in the work, it's also having the patience to see it flourish. You see, in this world of, of instant gratification, you know, you hear a word, you don't know what it is, you can look it up on your phone. There's no longer a lag between going to the library, grabbing a book, and learning what it's about, right? Mm -hmm. However... When it comes to manifesting, the timeline hasn't gotten any shorter just because technology is, has made things easier. The fact of the matter is everything still takes time and it still takes patience and it takes perseverance. Um, and it's, it's, it's keeping up your, your PMA, your positive mental attitude, which Napoleon Hill and Bob Proctor speak about a lot. Um, it's knowing that even when the chips are low, your mental attitude still needs to be positive into what you are attempting to create and keeping it in that mindset. But it's all just about the more you prepare yourself and the more that you understand what it is that you want this change to look like all the way at in the end, you can work backwards and kind of figure out the steps that you can make today that are going to impact what that change looks like in your future. Wow. And then um, with your coaches, are you working on, um, so for, let's say, for example, someone has, wears different hats. So with their clothing or their style, 
let's say, for example, you're a speaker, so you're on stage, you wear one thing. Because I know I wear different hats. And, you know, when I'm with my friends, I, I wear the more yoga <laughs> yoga clothes or the, you know, the dresses that are real flowy. But then, you know, when I'm in a business situation, there's the suit, there's the, you know, the pumps, the, um, how do you advise people as far as just showing up um, as themselves, yet showing up in that appropriate attire for each activity? Yeah, again, the important thing is for you to really feel confident in what you're wearing, you know? So, um, yeah, so dress appropriately, obviously, but feel, feel confident. So worry more about how you feel in the clothing than how the shoes look. Because if you're on stage, looking great is going to be amazing. But if you have really uncomfortable shoes, you're going to have a really hard time keeping your mind on what you're saying and keeping a comfortable face. So there's a thin line between how much am I going to dress to, to impress and how much am I going to feel well in what I'm wearing. So um, I would always say, you know, if you're going to be sitting down the whole time, always dress to impress. But if, always also be mindful of if you're going to be walking around to be appropriate in what you're wearing. Um, I can tell you right now the way, I mean, I'm, I'm in yoga clothes most of the time as well. Uh, yoga is a big part of my life. So yes, I'm mostly in yoga clothes. Um, what I do suggest is, for example, um, and these are like secrets of the trade. Don't tell anyone. Um, a lot of the girls that um, do stuff on stages or that have events, they do rent the runway. Um, so in, with Rent the Runway, it's perfect because if you have one event a month, you can't be wearing the same outfit to more than one event. So with Rent the Runway, you don't have to purchase anything either. You can just keep them coming. Return, send me another one. Return, send me another one. So a lot of these girls that I've met on the news that are newscasters, they do stuff like that. Um, and again, I can't say enough about going to thrift stores in the Goodwill. Like I have a style that I it's not in right now. So finding clothes that I really love, I, I'm not going to find that in stores. So I love to go to Poshmark or to go online and just shop for fun things. Not only because I feel better that I'm not paying full price, but I'm really big on, I create as little garbage as possible. I want my carbon footprint to be as small as possible. So using something that somebody else has used and then donating it forward and letting somebody else use it means that I feel also like I am doing a service to the planet by not buy. I mean, I know people that buy outfits, wear them once and never wear them again. And then they also just keep them. They don't give them, they don't pay it forward, you know? So it's one of those things where you also don't want to accumulate an excess because being messy and being a hoarder is also something that psychologically affects you. Um, that's for a whole nother topic, but yeah. <laughs> well, that is great advice. I mean, the tip on the rent the run runway is great. And, uh, you know, I thought about that too. It's like, okay, at what price do you, <laughs> do you wear something? Cause I, I, I like comfort. <laughs> so I want to yeah. good and be comfortable. So for sure. And, and the fun thing nowadays is that, you know, with company, all these crazy companies popping up in China that you can order things for super cheap from. A lot of people here in the States are using those and selling those and doing things. So you, you can find things very reasonable nowadays that look really amazing, especially if you have just a few things to wear too. Um, and I also suggest also always having like the essentials, you know, a black pair of pants, a cute black dress, something that you can change the jewelry and the shoes and throw on a belt and make it a completely different outfit. I mean, I have this black dress that I've worn so many times and no one has ever noticed that I've worn it more than once because it always looks so different because I'll put a little cardigan on it or I'll wear it with high boots or I'll wear it with really cute shoes and then everyone's just looking at the shoes mm -hmm. um, or I'll throw on a red belt and then it's like the red belt is there anything they look at so it's also one of those things where if you like fashion there's plenty of places you can go and play. Um, also, I would suggest doing a clothes swap with your friends. Those are always fun. Awesome. Um, get together with your girlfriends, rent a movie, make some popcorn and do a clothes swap and have some fun. 
Um, you can also do it for charity. Uh, we just did one. Um, I have some clients that belong to Fairbanks Ranch Country Club here in, in San Diego and Rancho Santa Fe. And they did a tennis uh, thing where people could bring their old tennis rackets and, and, and even ones that were messed up and they would fix them and then donate them. So it's, it's, it's also good to, to give back. So anything that you can do, you know, you could do the clothes swap and whatever nobody likes, then you go to the Goodwill or to Salvation Army or, or even, even better if you know someone locally that has a homeless shelter, even better than donate it there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Awesome. And if you can do anything to donate or help others, just, just, I mean, even in small ways, I always have a case of water and a box of um, like, uh, power bars or something and I tend not to give people money but if a homeless person I ask them are you thirsty are you hungry and if they say yes they're getting a bar and they're getting a bottle of water because nobody should go hungry or thirsty yes that's that's I believe that too so um just change the subject a little bit talk a little bit about um lifestyle choices so that's very, um, very specific to, to each person. And I can tell you, um, being in the business that I'm in, I've seen it all. Um, and there's space for everyone. Um, once you start to understand that somebody else's judgment is just that, their judgment, and that it doesn't matter, that it doesn't affect you, then you start being more open to having conversations with like-minded people, regardless of what others think. And with lifestyle, it's going to be a lot like that. You know, I get up at five in the morning, I meditate and I do yoga. Most people can't relate to that. That's my lifestyle. I'm in bed at nine o'clock at night. Most people my age can't relate to that. That's my lifestyle. Other people will say you're missing out or you're that doesn't matter to me. That's their opinion. And what I like in my life is going to bed early, getting enough rest, getting up and doing yoga and make it sets up my day. So when in terms of discovering what lifestyle you'd like to be, first of all, understand that money is never an object because you can always find a way, even if it's creating your own meetup just so you can do it. Right. So let's say that I want to do yoga and I'm not very good at yoga and I can't afford a yoga studio. I can go on meetup, create a group meetup. That's a yoga meetup. Figure out a video that we want to put and put a video. Sooner or later, someone will come up and they'll be like, man, I'm good enough to do this and I could teach this. And then all of a sudden you created a whole community of free yogis. Right. Yeah. Or let's say you're a teacher and you don't have a studio you can go on meetup and do a donation based class and start doing it on the beach. And it's donation based. You're not asking anyone for anything, whatever you can give me or you would like to give me for the service that I'm offering. So there's always ways. It's just understanding that whatever you choose, do not let the judgment of others, as long as you're not hurting anyone along the process, right? Do not let the judgment of others stop you you know, or, or the fact that other people don't agree or wouldn't be able to do it. Cause let me tell you right now, most people that say something about what I do is cause they don't see themselves getting up at five o'clock every morning, meditating and going to yoga class, right? It'd, it'd be too hard for them. It'd be too much of a sacrifice, but I'm 36. I feel like I'm 20. I walk on my hands. I'm super strong. And that's the lifestyle that I want to live. Like that's the, what matters in my life. So that time for me is sacred. So creating a lifestyle, the important thing is know what you want to achieve in your life and understand, again, that everything takes a bit of a sacrifice, but it's only because that's the law of action and you reaction. Like you have to give to get. That's just the way that this planetary experience got set up. It's the rules of the game. You know, whether, whether you know them or not, they're there. Um, and that's, that's, again, another topic. But universal laws, uh, again, another thing we're not taught about, just basic understanding of universal laws. 
once we understand those, it's easier to know why things happen. It's easier to understand why we can or can't bring things into our lives. And, and action and reaction is one of them. So it's, it's, it's establishing the pattern by creating the habits. And you do that with either a journal. You can start by, you know, I'm going to get up every morning. I'm going to journal. There's, I'm even going to put a plug in for somebody else's book that I bought on Amazon. It's called the 66 day habit changer. Don't ask me even who wrote it or who made it. I have no idea, but it's this little tiny book and it has things that you can write in it. And it's got what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. And then it keeps you um, honest about it. Cause then it asks you, how do you feel about it? Did you accomplish it? Um, plenty of tools out there that we can use. We can create our own journals. We can print something out. Um, you know, checklists, work really well for me because I'm an analytical mind that may not work so well for other people, but a checklist is always good. You know, I have a few things that I do every morning, check, check, check. Now I can get on my way. Um, and again, that'll be different for everybody. And it, it depends. Like obviously someone who's at a night shift could not apply my lifestyle because their, their work life is completely different. So it's also um, really looking at your own life and seeing, you know, first of all, do I love where I am at? That's the first question you got to ask yourself. If you're not, ask yourself why. And once you find that why, start attacking it and start finding ways to change it. Um, but once you establish what it is that you want, always writing it down will help you start working towards it and then devising the stuff. And, and, and you don't need to know what every step is going to look like. Uh, that's unrealistic. There is no plan that you can form today that two years from now is going to be perfect and everything went perfectly according to plan. That's a, also not how it works in this universe. Um, but what, if you're working little by little and you're not attached to the plan working perfectly, then as opportunities come, you can shift and you can notice the things and then just really be happy with the journey which is what this life is truly about it's the journey of finding ourselves and finding our passion and changing the world and, and inspiring the world in some way because that's truly why we're here to find our gift and share it yes it is that's why we, I have this podcast so yes Woo. I know you teach a very special kind of yoga class that's on a board in a pool I do. do you want to Tell people about that because when you told me about that, I had never heard of it. It sounds like so much fun, but tell me. Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, have you ever heard of stand up paddle board yoga? Um, yeah, so it's not that. Mm -hmm. So, it's similar, but this equipment was designed specifically to work out on it. So, it's wider and it's soft. So, if you fall on it, you don't hurt yourself, it's cushiony. Um, it wouldn't belong in the ocean. It belongs in a pool, but, um, you know, I love fitness because I believe that when people have a healthy body, they can manifest a lot more things because they don't spend their mind time and their mind space figuring out, you know, not liking themselves or not feeling well in their own bodies. Like a healthy body leads to a healthier mind because your mind can go to places that's not what's going on in your body. So these classes that I teach are all core based. They're all, um, they're strength core. Uh, there's some flexibility, some cardio, but it's mostly stability training. And I love it because it's all ages. Like I can have a 70 year old on one board and a 13 year old gymnast on another board. And the 70 year old can be having a hard time standing, but still shaking and working all her muscles. Whereas the young one could be doing cartwheels on the board. Um, and it's, it's really fun cause you're falling. So for me, working out is something that I need to like, I need to enjoy it. So I'm, I'm a dancer, I'm a yogi, anything that's jumping around outside, I'm hiking. Um, because I, I believe that every thing that we choose in our lives should bring us joy. And, and, I, and, and, and people think I'm crazy because I think that way. Cause, oh, how can everything in life bring you joy? Well, yeah, everything in life can bring you joy. It's a choice, you know? So, it, um, so, I, so I choose to do as many things as I can that bring me joy and make me happy. And 
No, getting up at five in the morning doesn't bring me joy, but everything that happens afterwards does. So once I get past that, oh, I got to get up, then it's on from there. So th again, that's the sacrifice. The one sacrifice for everything else that comes after, that's, that's beautiful. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, but. <laughs> yes. yes, it did. I thought that sounded so much fun. And, you know, I think as people get older, especially balance, and stability is so critical because you know you find older people their bodies get broken more easily so to, to be yeah. strong and be able to lift things and and do things the older we get and people are living longer and longer so that's just yeah and the thing is you know knowledge is power and understanding that as we get older our metabolism changes and our body isn't able to sustain as much muscle mass if it's not being used because it starts to be like, well, let me make things as efficient as possible. If these muscles aren't being used, they're gone. Older people are scared of weight. Like they're scared of lifting weights. I get so many clients that are, they don't want to get hurt. They don't want to get hurt. And, and, and I get where they come from because they hear, they hear of like CrossFit and all these intense activities where you're lifting extraneous amounts of work and, and, and a lot of people hurt themselves and oh my God, if I hurt myself. But the fact of the matter is that the only way that you build muscle is by failing, by fatiguing the muscle that you already have and telling your body, listen, I'm not strong enough. I need more. Mm -hmm. So once we, again, once we start understanding, okay, well, this is how my body works, then people become less scared to pick up a weight. It's not picking up a weight that after two repetitions, you feel like you can't hold it anymore but it's picking up a weight that after 10, you're barely being able to keep going so that you can actually fatigue your body. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's knowing that one of my yoga teachers is over 100 years old and she still travels <laughs> all over the world teaching yoga, doing arm balances, doing dance. She, st she still teaches dancing. <laughs> The human body, you do not age until you tell yourself that you're too old. You oh, that's a, that are unable to do that. something. When you, <laughs> it's huge. It's, it's huge. Arm balances. She can hold herself up all the way up with her hands. I mean, she's amazing. And, you know, eats in moderation, drinks in moderation, works out every day. It, and lives a happy life. The fact of the matter is happiness is more important than anything else in our life. Stress, uh, higher cortisol levels, um, those are the things that affect your body. You know, we've moved to, we think that the medical industry is the only word, way to treat disease. However, the word says it all. This ease. Mm -hmm. We are not at ease. Our bodies and our minds work together. If our body is not at ease, technically, usually something up here isn't either. So for example, my family, um, we have uh, autoimmune system diseases, left and disorders, left and right. My mom has three, my uncle has two, my grandfather had one. Every single one that my mom has, has been triggered by stress by very high level of stress. So the first one was during her master's dissertation in college. The second one was during her divorce with my dad. The third one was she had to have a colonoscopy, so she had the bag or whatever, and that really she didn't deal with it mentally in a good way, and it kind of led her to, to having more issues. So you can see, like, how this happened, boom, that happened, boom. All triggered by mental uh, uh, states, not physical anything. So no, it's not saying that people didn't create their own cancer. Sometimes, yes, the things that we're eating and putting in our bodies and our environment is also affecting a lot of it. But much of our disease is just that. It's disease. You're not happy. In your life, you're not you're not creating a state of a healthy thought pattern and a healthy mind, and and it all has to come out some way, and it comes out the only way it knows how, which is manifested in your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. I have learned so much listening <laughs> to everything you're saying. And I know there are people who would love to work with you, work with your team. So um, why don't you t tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your coaches, your, your offerings. I know you have a big event coming up. Yes. Oh my God. Awaken Within is our next retreat. Um, and as I mentioned before, the eight factors of human health. So we create a life map for our clients and we go through those factors in order to determine where they are misaligned and in order to find alignment. And then at the end of the retreat, we create a master. We do a ma what's called a mastermind. And a mastermind is nothing more than brilliant people giving you ideas on how to be able to incorporate things into your life. Um, the benefit of a mastermind is that if your train of thought and my train of thought are different and I'm thinking a certain way and you all of a sudden enlighten me with a different frame of thought, now I have two different tools that I can use to create something even better. So masterminds for me are number one. So as part of what we do, even in one-on-one -on -one coaching. So the retreat is from November 8th through the 12th. It's an all-inclusive retreat. You pay and you get your plane ticket bought for you, your transportation, all your activities, all your food, everything. And it's an amazing place. It's got a yoga studio, a yoga wall. The yoga, it's not too much of physical practice. It's a lot more about understanding the philosophy of yoga. And then when it comes to our team, so I realized early on when I started coaching that some of the things that my clients were dealing with were outside of my scope of expertise. Um, I am not a stylist, even though I've gotten much better to the point where I've even been called to do some, some, some modeling. So, so I've gotten better at that. Um, I'm also not a counselor. So if you have need relationship counseling, um, I am not an interior designer. So what I realized through my, through the more and more I talk to clients and I worked with clients was that, man, some of these issues that these people have are just not things that I'm equipped to solve. So I need a team. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this, after we go through the eight factors of health, we determine what is misaligned. Now, some of the things I can help you with when it comes to career, when it comes to working out, to getting your habits in line, that mostly you and I can work together. But let's say, um, so I had Sandra. Sandra was 71 when she started working with me and she had gained a bunch of weight after her husband passed away. She had a lot of emotional eating and we were, again, before I would treat the eating and the weight gain without treating the underlying cause. Once I understood there has to be an underlying cause, I asked her, you know, since when, what triggered all of this in your life? And I found out that her husband passed away and she found him in their home that she still lives in. Well, how do you move away from that? How do you move on from that if you're reminded every day? So we went through and figured out that she had always wanted to go to Greece. We found her this like five week cruise, put her on the cruise and redesigned her whole entire place inside and out. So when that woman came back, she walked into a completely different place. She parked <laughs> into a different place. I mean, we gutted the whole inside of that house and made it different. And then we, re we redecorated and redesigned her yard. So yes, she had to deal with something internal, but how much harder is it if something external is triggering what you're dealing with on, 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 on? So when we dealt with her environment, we were able to deal with all these other issues that she was having in her mind. And then everything else just kind of trickled down into place because that's also how the universe works. When, you, when, some, when things are supposed to happen, they're just, whoa, things are just happening left and right. But when you're fighting things, then you get what you want and you're like, man, I, I don't know if that's really what I wanted, right? So it's, it's one of those things. Once we figured out what was consistently triggering her emotionally, fix that. And then all of a sudden we take out those triggers and then everything else can get stabilized. So really our main job at Life and Style Coaches is to figure out what is that pattern? What is that hamster wheel? 
that's in your mind that's consistently there that is holding you back from taking your mind space under control and into what you want to focus on. Once we figure out what that hamster wheel is, then we deconstruct it and create a path out of it so that the hamster can now find a way to go and a place to go. <laughs> um, it's the easy, that's in a nutshell what we do. We take the hamster wheel, deconstruct it, and figure out a path that we want to place it in so that it becomes a road leading somewhere instead of just around in circles. And you know, it is so different for everyone. So my team at the moment is comprised of a relationship psychologist, a hypnotherapist, we have an interior designer, we have a builder, um, we have a financial advisor, uh, we have a stylist. Um, we are about to add on a woman who does clearings. I mean, that's getting into the woo-woo side, but you know, some people feel like they have this black cloud over them and you know, people that understand energy at a different level can see that sometimes, you know, it could be from your past even. So w w once we get diving a little deeper, it really depends on the needs of the person. I mean, we even have the ability, um, Tom is our success professional and he's built seven multi-million dollar corporations and he's uh, helped um, people who are in the verge of bankruptcy come out and sell their companies for millions. So we also have someone that can work with entrepreneurs. So really we bring in people because these people aren't coaches, they're professionals in their industry who have come on board, some of them because they've been my clients, believe it or not, and have loved what we do so much that they're like, can I be a part of this? And sure, of course you can. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that everything happens in a team. And that's why Life and Style Coaches was created. I can only serve a certain amount of people with a certain amount of issues or, 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 or concerns. But if I have other people that can serve other purposes, then I can help anyone with any concern. So that's really where, where I'm at in my life. And um, I, I, I'm a big supporter of others. You know, I believe that the more we advance our vibrational state in this universe as humanity, the more we will understand that my candle lighting up your candle only makes things brighter. It does not take away from my flame. Yeah. And um, I, I believe Buddha said that. Um, or something like it, um, and I'm just copying it. Uh, but it's 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 freeing to see things from that perspective, and it's important to understand if you are not seeing things from that perspective, change your perspective, and you will change what you see. Awesome, awesome. Oh, and so how do people contact you? Uh, lifeandstylecoaches.com at lifeandstylecoaches through Instagram. It's really easy to contact me through Instagram. Um, I get those things I get on my phone. Um, but yeah, the easiest way or call me 815-501-5070. I give my phone number away like it's candy. I don't care if you call me, I have time to talk to you. Um, I'm a firm believer that if, that if someone really, really needs me, I'm there. And they will, they will be able to reach me and it'll be perfect divine timing. So um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you can call my, my assistant. My assistant has a lot more things to do than answer random phone calls and trying to figure out how to give someone help in, in my name. So she, she works with me in other ways so that I can have time to pick up my phone and spend half an hour talking to people when I need to. Um, so it's, it's, I've, I develop my business in a completely different way than other people do. So most people have an assistant so that they don't have to deal with the, their clients. I have an assistant so that I don't have to deal with menial things so that I can deal with my clients. So uh, and it's, it's been super freeing. Um, you also, it, there's also a process to become a client. Um, most companies will take your money because they need your business and they want your business whether they can really serve you or not 
Uh, we don't believe that. We want to work with people who are truly ready to incorporate a change into their lives because this is a much, as much of a process for us as it is for the people we serve. We do not have, even though the life mapping process is a process that everyone goes through, when we develop a roadmap for that person to follow, it's all done individualized. Therefore, we go through a lot of work to develop these programs and to support these clients. So our most important thing is that the client needs to be ready to change and needs to be willing to incorporate the changes. Otherwise, they're throwing away their money and we're wasting time and resources and neither of that serves anybody. So um, once we go through, there's two, two phone calls that happen. Um, the first one is just so that are we even going to get along? Because if we're not going to get along, I'm not really going to be able to affect um, how you feel or you're not going to really be responsive to, to what I'm attempting to teach you. And then number two is I give you some homework and I help you realize what it is that you're willing to give in to and what you're, you're really desiring to come in to even see if it'll be a good fit. Because you know what? Sometimes within one conversation, I give people enough information for them to go out there and, and make some changes that are enough and they don't even need to hire us. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's okay with me as well. Um, again, it's empowering to be in a position where you can truly just serve and, and, and work with the clients that you know that you can work with and then just donate your time when you can. And, and that's empowering as well. You know, I, some of the people that I work with, it's like I, I always bring it back to the prisoners because that's, that's just something that's very dear to my heart. Um, I, I believe in second chances. I believe that every single person deserves a, check, a second chance, um, especially when they prove that they have learned something or done something to, to, make, to make it up. Um, it, it's, it's by no mistake that the one good thing about church is that it tells you that your sins can be forgiven. Um, mm -hmm. But they're not forgiven by somebody else. They're forgiven by yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And, that, and that's, that's where people get it wrong. It's you forgiving yourself for having done something and then moving past that and giving yourself permission to become a better person afterwards. Um, that's, that clearing truly happens and that growth really happens. But if that spark is there, um, I, I'm, I'm always there to change. So yeah, Life and Style Coaches is the easiest way at Life and Style Coaches. Um, and, or give me a call. I'll repeat my number, 815-501-5070. Would love to chat to hear anything, even if it's just to, to let me know what you think about, about the podcast today. <laughs> Yes, yes. And we'll make sure and put the, that information in the notes. So if, if you go down below the podcast, there's actually notes. So we'll make sure that your phone number's in there so people can contact you. Perfect. That sounds fantastic. But thank you so much for being on the podcast. Oh, you're oh so thank you for having me. And, and um, you're doing so many wonderful things to serve the world. And oh. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. It truly is an honor to have such a big purpose. Um, I believe the universe is one amazing and powerful um, energy. And if I can help every single person understand that it belongs to them just as much as it belongs to me and to everyone else, and that they can use it and create a wonderful life, then I've done, I've done my job and done some. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll be talking Thank to you. you again very soon. Sounds great. Can't wait to be back. Thanks, Kimberly. Mm -hmm.